when a punch hits your face, it's like your your legs go, everything like shuts off. Like if you get rocked and you, you see like a person go down, it's not that they go down like, oh, there's so much pain, I have to go down. No, you get hit and everything shuts off. Knockout as one of the possible outcomes in the fight was always considered an inseparable part of fighting culture. For the short time that mixed martial arts were developing to the current level, the number of knockouts is incalculable. Indeed, as the time passed, the loyal fan base began to have their favourites, who happened to be quite successful in the craft and mastered the art of knocking people out to the extent that many began to directly associate them with that manner of ending the fights. Concerning this topic, we'll bring to your attention 10 knockout artists of the UFC. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with four words, and subscribe to the channel. Here we go. 10th place, John Lineker. Lineker is scary. Lineker is super scary. He's terrifying. So well through the fights. Oh, nasty oh. here. Another huge oh, that could be it. Down goes those collects. That'll do it. John Lineker. Oh, oh. another knockdown for Lineker. John Lineker, nicknamed Hands of Stone, is the Brazilian MMA fighter. Currently, he is only 32, but his professional record consists of more than 40 fights. This guy successfully competed in the world's best league from May of 2012 till April of 2019, even though his career started back in 2008. Right now, he is on a four-fight winning streak and competes in the major Asian organization called One Championship. He has 17 knockouts on his resume with 35 victories in total. On top of that, he is a former champion of a popular local jungle fight promotion and a Nitrix Fights Grand Prix winner. The bigger portion of his fame came during his time in the UFC. In just eight years within these walls, he had 16 fights, four decision losses, five decision victories and seven knockouts. A couple of years ago, when the Brazilian was smashing fighters in the world's best league, the MMA community was anticipating his fight with the Russian fighter and a former champion, Piotr Jan. Unfortunately, this fight did not happen, even though the fans wanted to see this matchup. Both are quite similar in their styles. Both like to pressure, throw a barrage of strikes and force their will. One can just take a look at what he did to Michael McDonald. Oh! Another knockdown! Wow. John Lineker! And what to say about his wins in one championship after he transitioned from the UFC. Just look at how he gets rid of everybody in his way. Oh! oh beautifully done! That's good night, Henry! Who knows, maybe in the future we'll see his fight with Piotr Jan in the octagon. Let's not speculate on that yet. Either way, this guy deserves to be talked about. 9th place, Justin Gaethje. I'm a violent mother I'm the most violent lightweight on this planet, and I will be <laughs> that. Big right from Gaethje, and down Whoa. goes Vic. No, he it's it. It's not Justin Gaethje. With a roll oh. overhead right, it's Justin over. Oh. Gaethje. That is it. Everybody knows Justin Gaethje. He is an active UFC fighter who for a rather short time turned from a blunt brawler. Final seconds. And look at him swing into the bell. With powerful low kicks. Is he a flinch? And part of me, he can hit him with everything. No record, 6-0 in the WSOF. I mean, the low kicks. See that, don't you? Palomino. To try to get to him. And Charlie Horse, he's giving him a challenge. This is a best. And heavy overhands. Wow. And Gacy looking to end it. Into a balanced and elite striker. Highlight is 34. He occupies the number three spot in one of the most competitive weight classes in the UFC. For his whole professional career, this guy beat many top fighters. Every big event with his features is a true show. He always managed to impress with his skills, fearlessness, bones solid like a steel and strikes heavy like a running train. His professional record consists of 23 wins and four losses. 19 victories are earned by stoppages, TKOs or clean knockouts. 
He has a lot of notable names on his resume since his debut in the UFC on July the 7th of 2017. He had many performance of the night bonuses. Here are his major recent achievements. Mutilated Michael Johnson, who for a long time was seen as a decent striker, beat up former champion Eddie Alvarez, torn hip muscles in, after which El Kukui couldn't come back to his previous level. Oh, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. What a combination also. Oh my goodness. Oh, 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 Tony's oh. hurt. He's hurt real bad. He's, oh, he's hurt, hurt real bad. bad. They're going to stop hurt. the fight. That's it. Oh, man. Justin Gaethje. Wow. The three-round uncompromised war with Michael Chandler, as a result of which the highlight came out on top. Oh, oh my goodness. What a oh. Oh, oh. Justin Gaethje was the champion of a quite known local promotion, WSOF, and a former interim UFC lightweight champion. A former king of this division, Habib Nurmagomedov, also noted his power and said that Justin Gaethje hit him harder than anybody he fought against. When I fight was uh, Justin Gaethje, last fight, it was like when I go to the cage, you know, th th this guy, he, he hit like truck, you know, like nobody hit harder than me, like harder than Justin Gaethje. His kick, his punch, his left hook, right hook, right uppercut, you know, it's like... Currently, as we said earlier, Justin Gaethje is a number three ranked lightweight and perhaps in the near future, we will see him in the octagon again for another big show. Eighth place, Dan Henderson. You know, I just uh, absolutely love the sport. And I wanna, I wanna say thank you to the fans for making this fight happen and thank you to Michael Bisbee for... You can't go without the legends of the previous generation. Dan Henderson is still recognized as one of the most prominent knockout artists in MMA. For the time of his rich career, Endo won fights and earned titles only in the best organizations. These include Legendary Pride, Henderson was a two-time champion, Strike Force, he conquered the light heavyweight title, won the rings tournament, and got his hand raised in the unifying UFC 17 tournament in 1988. For 19 years of his active career, Dan Henderson beat such fighters as Fedor Emelianenko, Vitor Belfort, Vanderlei Silva, Mauricio Hua, Gilbert Ivel, Henry 100. On that night, Hendo smashed Michael Bisping already in the middle of the second round, not to mention his uncompromising brawls with the axe murderer, And Mauricio Hua. By the way, his fight with the latter is still this day considered as one of the most vivid ones in UFC history. Seventh place, Yoel Romero. I ain't scared of no man on this planet apart from Yoel Romero. <laughs> Even though the professional career of the legendary Cuban began in his 30s, for such a short period, Yoel Romero managed to make a name for himself in the best way possible. In just 13 years, this guy earned April the 20th of 2013, the Cuban ran through the key figures of the middleweight division. Love you, man. You said something like this for me, and now I say you. I love you. See you soon. There was even a time when he couldn't get a fight simply because nobody wanted that kind of smoke and didn't accept this offer. Just think about it. In the autumn of 2021, the Soldier of God left the UFC after losing four fights in a row via controversial decisions. And after that, he debuted in the second major league, Bellator, where he continues to compete at the highest level till this day, slaying more younger opponents. And by the way, he is 45. And in February of 2023, he will face a highly promising Russian representative, Vadim Nemkov. Undoubtedly, Yoel Romero is an MMA phenom. 
He is still in fantastic shape and entertains his fans with high quality performances. And even though his career could be more successful if he came in this career earlier, still, his contribution in martial arts is huge and he rightfully deserves this place in our top 10. 6th place, Jeremy Stevens. This guy TKO's people. When I knock people out, they don't fucking move. Then we have the MMA Alliance representative and a former UFC fighter, Jeremy Stevens. The professional career of Lil Heathen began back in 2005. Now he is 36 and has 51 fights on his record. Overall, this guy won 30 fights, 4 submissions, 8 decisions and 18 knockouts. Even though lately Jeremy Stevens has not delivered his best performances, at a younger age, his every second bout ended in a quick and impressive manner. The fact that he debuted in the world's best league in September of 2007 and competed till 2021 without any releases and other reasons to switch organizations speaks for itself. In his best years, he gave a lot of problems to many top featherweight fighters and lost only to the best of the best and that deserves respect and a place on our top list. 5th place, Derek Lewis. No, no, don't. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. Nice combination. Oh, he's in. That's that's it. Target. He's out. The Black Beast. Yet again, Gene Tavera is out. Dan Bergliotta stops it. Here. Big shots. Derek Lewis wins here at home. That is a big, big victory for Derek Lewis. The first one to reach the equator of our list is an active UFC fighter and a number 7 ranked heavyweight, Derek Lewis. Currently, the 37-year-old American is as close as it gets to retiring. And even though his career started in 2010, for these 12 years he participated in dozens of spectacular rivalries. The bigger portion of his popularity, as many other fighters from this list, the black beats earned in the world's best league. Within these walls, he shined the brightest and scored many knockouts over the best heavyweights in the organization. Moreover, as of 2022, he has one of the bigger number of knockout wins for eight years of competing in the UFC. 13. On top of that, he openly preaches the image of a so-called anti-athlete, has a controversial behavior and causes potential championship a shame for the division. Yeah, I'm carrying around for a while, you know, I'm entering heavyweight champ. These statements most often appeared in 2018, prior to his fight with Daniel Cormier. He disrespected Popeye's chicken on a commercial few years ago. Frankly speaking, the American always described himself as a fighter who is not fully committed to training. He fights only because he gets paid. Oh, Jane and for money. You want <laughs> and doesn't master any aspects of the MMA game. And despite all of that, out Sergei Pavlovich. First of all, thank you very much. I'd like to say thank you to Ty. He's a great guy, really strong guy. Honestly, before this fight at the press conference, I had nothing but great, great things to say about him. And I have to tell you that I do a lot of work to get here and a lot of work to get to my results. So thank you for everyone who, who, uh, who's with me on this. Here we have a young Russian representative, Sergei Pavlovich. Right now, Russian heavyweight is a number three ranked UFC heavyweight. He is only 30 and tasted defeat only once. The professional career of this guy began exactly eight years ago, in December of 2014. For the first five years of its professional performances, he racked up 12 wins with no losses. Nine of them were via first round knockout, with no exception. Ale i on jednou trefil, ovšem další brana je konec.
After that, a promising 26-year-old heavyweight expectedly debuted in the world's best league. His first appearance inside the UFC Octagon happened in November of 2018 at UFC Fight Night 141. And the young prospect's first opponent was the legendary veteran and a former champion of many different organizations, Alistair Overeem. The debut of the Russian fighter was not very successful to say the least. However, he managed to make the necessary adjustments and recalibrate. After that, starting from December of 2022, the Russian tank scored five first round stoppages and got as close as possible to the title opportunity. If we count the overall number of wins, he has 17, 14 of which are finishes in the first round. Pavlov got him hurt! Oh, and another big right hand! Oh, Lewis no. face first! Sergei wow. Pavlovich! Currently, Sergei Pavlovich lied of this Russian bogarty, as he was called the White and Ganu, which is quite deserved considering that all of his knockout wins are earned in the first round. Without any doubt, his clash with Nganu will be one of the most anticipated fights in the history of the heavyweight division. For all these achievements, Sergei Pavlovich is placed number four in our list. Third place, Vita Belfort. Luke Rockhold making his UFC debut against the Phenom Vita. The legendary Brazilian Vita Belfort opens our top three. Throughout his vivid professional career, the Phenom beat dozens of remarkable fighters. He held the belts of many prestigious organizations, including Cage Rage and the UFC. The figure of Vita Belfort drew attention from the fans since his professional sports debut. And not even a simple debut, but a sudden assault that completely destroyed everybody from one fight to another. Even until recently, as the Brazilian retired in 2018, the Phenom was still in the elite fighters club and an extremely dangerous opponent for anybody he faced in the octagon. The main peculiarity of Belfort is consistency. The times passed, he switched organizations, weight classes and mixed martial arts themselves developed to incredible heights. But the Brazilian still was the same remarkable figure, even after his retirement. But the main version of Belfort when he inspired fear, it's his version of 2013 when he scored three brilliant knockouts in a row. He smashed Bisping and injured his eye, sent Luke Rockhold to conquer the modeling business with a spinning kick and completely demolished Dan Henderson, becoming the first man ever to knock Hendo out. Vita is one of the scariest fighters in history, there's no doubt about that. By this moment, Phenom's professional career ended more than six years ago. He has 26 wins on his record, 18 of which are earned by a clean knockout or a TKO. Despite his retirement, the legendary veteran is still in the hearts of loyal fans. So, as an athlete and a man, he deserves a spot on our list. Second place, Anthony Johnson. Oh, oh he's out, my. he's out. He's gonna finish it right here. Interesting. Oh, oh my. just right back. Cool. It is all over. Anthony Rumble Johnson. Man. In the absolutely deserving second place, we have one of the most terrifying knockout artists in the world. For his rather short, according to Common Standards, career, Anthony Johnson delivered a lot of spectacular and epic fights. He had a couple of successful runs in the world's best league and vivid wins over many top opponents. In his best years, Rumble destroyed anybody standing in his way. The eye. Oh! And dropped him! Oh man! That... And now Kyle tries there to he's not down, he's out, it's over! Oh. It's over! Even when he was an underdog, he entered the octagon and proved everybody wrong. The career of the legendary Anthony Johnson had a lot of breaking points, but he always found strength within him and came back with double powers. He changed weight classes, fought for his legacy and desperately tried to conquer the title. And even though he failed twice at beating the UFC Hall of Famer Daniel Cormier years later, a former champion admitted that nobody hit him harder than Rumble. What contributed to Anthony Johnson's greatness even more is his last comeback on May the 7th of 2021. 
After his retirement and a more than a four-year layoff, Rumble performed at Bellator 258 and knocked out Jose Barros in the second round. Not many fighters can return to a former level even after a one-year layoff, and Anthony Johnson did that after his retirement all while fighting a severe illness. But the main highlight in Rumble's career that put his terrifying power on full display is his fight with a former UFC champion who lost his title not long ago, Glover Teixeira. At that moment, these guys occupied first and second spots in the light heavyweight rankings, and this fight lasted for only 11 seconds. Already in the very beginning of this fight, the Brazilian's chin got blasted with an uppercut. As a powerful and scary knockout artist who inspired terror in the souls of his opponents inside and outside the cage. Out trouble. He's trouble. rocked! Rumble trying to finish Alexander Gustafsson! Oh, that was a it is That's all it. over! Wow. Anthony Rumble Johnson wow. finishes Alexander Gustafsson! Closes the show! Oh my goodness Just like that, gracious! Francis Ngannou has knocked out Cain Velasquez! Wow. The first place indubitably should be occupied by the active heavyweight UFC champion Francis Ngannou, the French fighter of Cameroonian descent for not a very long professional career managed to impress many current fighters also in the octagon. Right now Francis Ngannou is 36 and he began to train MMA just 9 years ago. Sure, the first wins of a young fighter were not so impressive compared to the most recent ones, however they already hinted at his evident potential. As soon as the future champion broke into the UFC, it appeared that just one single touch of his glove to the opponent's chin was enough to end the fight. And while his first fights in the world's best league lasted for a couple of rounds, every fight was shorter and shorter. Here is a brief overview. To beat Anthony Gamilton, Nganu needed 117 seconds. Andrei Arlovsky, 92 seconds. Alistair Overeem lasted for 102 seconds. Junior Dos Santos, 71 seconds. What a pain! Francis oh, Ngannou! Too much! Curtis Blades couldn't make it past 46 seconds. Over the top with the right hand! Oh, this there is bad is. news! That's what? it! Francis Ngannou! Wow. Cain Velasquez, 26 seconds, and to beat the undefeated prospect in Yazinho Rosenstrike, Francis needed 20 seconds. Oh, oh that's it. it's all Rosenstrike is out Whoa. in Gadu. Out, out bad. Out cold. These are some otherworldly numbers. For all these opponents, including former UFC champions, Ngannou needed less than 10 minutes. The Cameroonian with his performances proves one saying wrong. It's a heavyweight and anybody can land a punch. In reality, it's not true. Officially, Francis Ngannou has the heaviest punch in the world's best league among many fighters to ever compete in there. And it speaks for itself. Right now, Francis Ngannou holds the heavyweight UFC title and considering his most recent performance, he progresses very quickly and tries to develop other essential aspects in his game. That deserves respect. If you believe the rumors, there are plans for the beginning of 2023 to organize the fight between Francis Ngannou and the greatest of all time, John Jones. Well, if this fight finally happens, we are having a legendary rivalry ahead of us. That's it for now. Leave your opinion in the comments below. Do you think that all fighters from our list deserve their spot? And if not, how would you change this? Please don't forget about the likes and subscribe to the channel. See you soon.